So chapter one, pawn end games. Pawn end games are very concrete. Even the tiniest change in the position generally alters the shape and outcome of the struggle. Here you can get here you can rarely get along on general principles. You must know how to calculate accurately. The study of pawn end games pawn endings chiefly boils down not to the memorization of exact positions, but to the assimilation of standard techniques which considerably ease our search in the solution and calculations of variations. Wow. Which considerably eases our search for the sol for a solution and the calculation of variation. Shin, 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 shin. Many pawn end games are clearly defined tempo battles. In the in these end games, speed is everything. Which pawn will queen first? Will the king come in time? Uh, king come in time to the top stop the pass pawn, or get on the other side of the board in time? And there are other pawn end games in which maneuvering war predominates, and and with and in which Zigzwang assume um, assumes paramount importance. Maneuvering quote quote end games are generally more complex than quote quote rapid ones, but we shall begin with them anyway in order to acquire the vital concepts of corresponding squares. Then we shall switch to studying the ideas involved in rapid end games before returning once again to maneuvering. So the key squares. Key squares are what we call those squares whose occupation by the king assures victory regardless of whose move it is to move. Uh, in other end games we may also speak uh, of key squares and other pieces besides the king. So here we go. Okay, this is the first position. Um, key squares are what we call those squares whose occupation around with the king ensures victory regardless of whose move it is to move. In other types of endgames, we may also speak of key squares other than the king. So the key squares here is these right here. So actually, let me... Okay, so these are the key squares. D5, on which the king now stands, is not a key square. White has to move and does not win. The key squares are c6, d6, and e6. Black to move must retreat. Uh, black to move must retreat his king, allowing the enemy king onto one of these squares. With white to move, the position is drawn since he cannot reach any key squares. So uh, the key squares c6, uh, d6, and e6. With the pawn the fifth rank, we now see. Oh, a nice diagram. Oh, okay. Okay, with the pawn of the fifth rank, next diagram, uh, the key square is not only e7, d7, c7, but also the familiar rank squares c6 and a6 and b6. White wins even if he is on the move. Uh, white uh, so, for example, king a6, b6, king a8, b6, king b8, b7. Guarding these two squares. Um, note that the note that king c6 is inaccurate in view of king a7, in which white returns back to the starting position. King c7, uh, b6 check, check question mark leads to this and uh, it's going to be stalemate. Um, so for example, stalemate. That. Check. Stalemate. Okay. Um, so king a7. So if king c7, king c7, king c8, king b6, king here, king b6, king b8, and now we go back to king a6. So essentially you wasted time. You might as well just start with king a6, king a8, push b6, king b8, B7, guarding that. Okay. So here's the position. Um, that we are given. 
and says uh, basically um, so here it's uh, white to move I think let me see here all right to the left of the diagrams you'll find the find important information first of all the indication of whose move it is W means white to move and B for black to move okay that makes sense so white to black and then um, let me see here if a question mark is shown, the position can be used as an exercise. Most often, there is no special explanation from what is expected from the reader. He must make the correct decision on his own because in an actual game, nobody will tell you whether he should play for a draw or for a win, calculate a lot, or simply make a natural move. Sometimes, however, a certain hint is included in a verbal question. Exercises are given in blah, 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 blah. The combinations of B capture or B question mark backslash play means that position is designed for playing. Okay, cool. All right, so then this is, okay, so literally right next to the diagram, it has this thing here. This is like, what? And so essentially it's white to move. So when we, I need a bookmark. All right, there we go. And so it's essentially, are you, guys, are you guys finding this instructive? Yeah, no, maybe? No, it, it says W. Yeah, so it means white to move. It's like a little shortcut. So, all right, so white to move. All right, so white to move. The idea is, okay, so um, I say the idea is try to get to the key squares um, because we just did this just a moment ago. And so I think, I mean, here the problem is if we go king up here, the problem is that this king can come in and block us. So like one, two, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm doing this in my head, but um, the point is that one, two, one, two, um, and then we can't, then three, we still can't get into the squares um, because our king is like stuck behind the pawn. So actually the best move is probably king coming here, and the idea is that this king can't block us from coming to these key squares over here. And so probably the best move is probably king c2. And so let's just say uh, he tries to get to this way, or I mean, it doesn't really matter what black does, but the idea is you want to go around. So we want to get to the key squares, which was what? These right here. And so we want to get there faster. And so going straight would lead to a draw, but going to the side would be faster. So going here, again, key squares, yay. And by the way, this is why I like Dasher. I don't think you guys see this in Dasher. Flashing, you know, squares, yeah. You know, um, do you see this arrow? Hmm? Oh, invisible pieces? Hmm? Oh yeah, flashing pieces too. Um, you also can select a square. You can also, um, what you can also do is uh, draw arrows, right? But why not change the color of the arrow? Yay! And change the color of the arrow again. Yay! Okay, so, Hence why I like the Asher more, all right, for those who are wondering. I think, can we do red? Yeah, we can do red arrow. Yay! Magenta, pink, yeah, that's my favorite color. All right, so, um, I, I'll just do green, maybe. Yay! Oh, green squares. Ew. No, no, no. Red. And, um, yeah. Okay, so now, so, yeah, this is why I like the Asher. All right, that's blue. All right, cool. And back. All right, clear up for everything. All right, information over. All right, watch out for episode. Let's see. Yes. <laughs> All right, so yeah, key squares again is right there. Okay. And so, yeah, exactly. Let's see, how many squares can I highlight? Uh, oops. Wah, wah. <laughs> All right, anyways, um, so back to the original position. We want to get to the key squares, so we're going this way rather than going forward. So, um, well, what's CSS? No, I know, that's like, what, Photoshop or something? <laughs> so, anyways, um, and this is one, two, and coming here. So we're going to go to the key squares. Okay. You notice that it doesn't matter 
Um, again, here we go back to like opposition and stuff where here again simply we can win this. And now since our king's in front of the pawn, that's okay. Because now like this, we get to that key position again and again we can win like that. So I think that's the solution. So I'm going to go ahead and look, uh, turn the page and see if that's the answer. So correct move should be king c2, not king d2. So here we go. The key square is a6, b6, c6. The sensible thing here is to hit for the square farthest away from the enemy of the king, since that is the one that is hardest to defend. So king c2, yes, so I said it, I, I did it right. So king c2, king e7. King b3, king d6, king a4, uh, again, king c4, question mark, king here, and that, you know, your king's not stuck. Um, so king a4, king c6, king a5, uh, king b7, and now king b5, and that's just, this opposition is just a win. So um, if people don't know this, this is called the opposition. Um, if, you step your, if, you, if you step your king in front of your opponent, it's called opposition. And essentially, you're telling the king to go either back or step aside. And so if it goes back, well, you can, again, push them back. And essentially, again, here, the same question is being asked, but that now it's like you can't really step back. So you have to go either to the side. You're know, telling the kings to step aside. The idea is that after, um, for example, like after uh, he steps aside, we can claim a square that he vacates. So because like right now, this king is guarding all three squares, we're telling him to step aside so we can get access to one square. And so essentially we are pushing the king uh, away and now since we got these uh, promotion squares now we can just push this pawn down without worrying it being, it being captured. So that's the idea here. So that's why um, I like this endgame book already um, because essentially it just said that uh, here or I think it was like king c7 or something. Yeah. Um, and essentially, this is basically, um, it, it stops right here. So if you guys don't know this endgame, sorry. Uh, but I'm just going to go ahead and read this, and then I'll teach the Sylvan endgame book to everybody else later. I think 15 hats, um, is 15 hats in here? 15 hats? 15 hats? I think 15 hats is already doing a Sylvan endgame book. Uh, so Jeremy Sylvan's endgame book. Uh, that is what 15 has is doing, oop, doing, and check them out, if I can spell 15, I can't spell 15, 15 hats, I search videos, um, he's doing that right now, I'm doing Doreski's in games, in game manual, third edition, uh, that's what I'm doing right now, so, um, so we're on page, Five, I think. Nope. Oops. Okay, yeah. So here's another exercise, and I need to not look at the answer, of course. Um, so it kind of reads like a like a chess life magazine. If I don't know if you guys are in the United States, some of you guys are not, but basically it's like a course. It calms down, so you don't want to read like down, you kind of run, you want to read down, but you don't want to read like across, and so you just want to make sure you don't look at uh, moves from the next, for the next position, so it was nice that this uh, exercise was like on the back page of this, all right, okay, so here it is now white to move, and so I guess the idea is to take this pawn and then promote obviously um, I don't think it's wise to go here because it allows this king to get in here faster so we actually want to box this king out and then so I mean one two one two three so yeah king of two is probably the best because this king is trying to get in here you don't really don't want to go king g1 and it doesn't really help you to take an extra move this way in fact you can get the pawn faster this way um, so let's see. Um, let me clear the arrows. <laughs> Excuse me. <coughs> ah, all right. Um, clear the arrows. All right. Um, so king f2, probably the best move. 
uh, key goes here, here, here. Oops, he skipped the move. Here, here, not good. Um, so we want to prevent him from getting to this square. So actually, um, basically, we don't want him to protect the pawn. So let me see here. I, I don't like the arrows. Um, you guys can try and manage what I'm thinking. Uh, king f2, king d7, king f3, king e6, and now king g5. And um, essentially, we're on the pawn. And so after king f5, we can take. No, we can't go king f5. So king e5, and then take on f5, and then we're simply up to the pawn. And now we can guard that pawn and get it win. So king f2, king d7, king f3, king e6, king g5, and now we're on the pawn. So really arouse this. Oops, one, two, three, four, and this is one, two, but you can't go here on move three because on move three we are already here. So king of two, final answer. And I think this is all the variations I need to calculate, so I'm going to look at the answer. Yes, king f1, uh, king of two is the correct answer. King On king g1, uh, on king g1, king, uh, king g7, and now it's just too late because after king g7, um, It does king g3. What? Uh, it doesn't doesn't matter. Like here, so king g1, king d7. Here, 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 here. here. So essentially now, oops. Oh, I guess I didn't calculate all the variations. Shoot. Um. So here, okay. So king f2. All right, king f2. Um, and now if you press h4, you can't play king f3 because h3. Oh, ouch. Notice that, guys? Look at that power move. So h4, right? And if king f3, then you're just blundering. So I, I didn't consider um, this pawn push, unfortunately. I should have. Um, because after this, uh, King h4, we don't play our king up because of this h3 because now this is a draw because white basically white gets to h1 first um, or h8 excuse me. So here you don't want you want to avoid this and obviously taking here you can't promote without your bringing out your king and you can't promote a rook pawn if the king's in front uh, of the pawn uh, especially in the corner. So. Um, in this end game, you really want to actually play King G1. So now you you have to in time because this guy is one square away uh, from the pawn. Oops, I can't draw arrows. Um, so one, two, three, four. You're only one, two, three squares away. So now you want to take the pawn that way. So King G1, H3. And now again, you do not want to take this pawn. The point White Black is trying to trick you because he can get to H8 first rather than uh, getting the rook pawn here. So here, the best move is g3. Why? Because now we can take this pawn and also be in front of our king, and also probably get a tempo and win the end game that way. Okay? So uh, some, so now, I mean, with, uh, again, the key squares for this uh, is these squares here. And so, um, so here, for example, this is how it's going to finish. Um, this is to show you guys. G3, um, H3, G3, King D7, King H2, King E6, um, takes on H5, F5, uh, King H4, King G6, and now King G4. And this is the opposition thing that, if you guys don't know, um, this is um, essentially a... Uh, 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 it's, this is just a win in game, so. Um, okay, I want to get the next position after I find this thing here. Yay! 
Okay. Car Caraboy or Car Caraboy. Hey, Caraboy. Uh, thanks for following. Um. So okay, I guess I didn't calculate all the variations. So this time I'm going to actually calculate all the variations of this, and um, that includes even the king pawn move. So because I only in this position back here, I only considered um, this king moving up. Oops, this king. Ah, I can't draw because it's not the move. But you know, I, I only consider this king moving. I'm not this pawn push. So I'm going to do a better job at analyzing all of those too. Okay, tragical comedies. Okay, okay. Uh, well, this is not lecture. This just shows you that uh, key squares and also um, this also shows you just how much in games you don't know sometimes. Um, so here. Um, this is what the text it was played in 1988 and um, the lady um, the lady playing white Scott's board one Scotland's board one saw that she must lose d5 pawn and therefore resign what can I say except no comment needed so uh, <laughs> The point is, uh, I don't know, here, is it white to move or black to move, is it? Okay, I have to take here, is it, I don't know what, whose move is it? Whose move is it? I'm not sure whose move it is. Um, I think, oh, yeah, so, if it's, here, here, yeah, you don't go back here. You actually go to here, opposition, and then take and then go back here. And that's just, this is draw because uh, black cannot reach those key squares. But uh, the comment uh, here, the lady playing white, Scotland's board one, saw that she must lose the d5 pawn, therefore resigned. What can I say except no comment needed? Okay, if you are 1600 rated or below, I don't, or something like that, um, I definitely don't recommend this book because it's like, why is it a draw? You know, it doesn't really tell you. I mean, it just says no comment needed. So, um, and here's a classical position, um, which is nice. Uh, I've seen this before, but the concept is nice. It's just like you need to reach those critical squares, and it's a different way of teaching the end game. But uh, okay, so black is checked. So after king f4, right? Black white thinks like, oh, take take, and now. You know, this king's behind the pawn, or, you know, not in front of the pawn. Um, and so, essentially, this is a draw. In fact, it's not, because after king g5, now we're threatening to win the rook. Check. Take, take, and now we've got the opposition, and we're in front of the pawn, and we can reach these key squares here. Okay? All right. So, corresponding, okay, so now we're doing corresponding squares. Corresponding squares. Hey, guess what? It teaches you opposition here. <laughs> so, all right. So, essentially here. Um, corresponding squares are squares of reciprocal zugzwang. We may speak of corresponding squares for kings, for kings with pawns, and with other material. We may speak of corresponding between any pair of pieces. The most common of these cases of corresponding squares are the opposition, the mind squares, okay, which I don't know, and triangul triangulization. Opposition. Opposition is the state of two kings standing on the same file of one square part, um, separating them. Close opposition. Five or three or five squares between is called distant opposition. So that's that's just common knowledge. Um, the opposition may be vertical, horizontal, or diagonal. To get opposition means to achieve this standing of the kings one square apart with the opponent to move. That is to place him in zugzwang. To fall into opposition means conversely to fall into zugzwang oneself. We turn to diagram one, one dash one. Okay. Uh, 
<laughs> All right, fine. Um, okay. Uh, remember, this is the key squares. So key squares, corresponding squares now. All right. So this is interesting. Um, all right. Where we see that the simplest case of opposition, close, vertical. With white to move, there is no win. King c5, king c7, king e5, king e7. Black to move loses because he must allow enemy king onto the key squares. King c7, king e6, king e7, king c king, king c6. So king c7, so, oh wait, yeah, black to move. King c7, king c e6, and king e7, king c6. Okay? When we are speaking of opposition, it is usually not a pair. Of, is, is is usually not just a pair of rooks, but several, uh, which are under consideration. C C5, C7. Um, oh, so okay. So it's not just a pair, but several just under consideration. So C5, C7, uh, D5. Oh, okay, okay. So okay, so it's saying that. Oops. All right, let me move this. Okay. So saying that it's uh, a pair, some, it's not usually just one pair of squares and can, um, but several in consideration. So c5, c7, um, d5 and d7, and then uh, e5 and e7. So these are like a pair. So you still want to get, um, you want to look at those opposition. So the stronger side you get the opposition in order to execute outflanking where the okay so outflanking okay um where the enemy king retreats to one side and our king attacks the other way the weaker side is, gets the weaker side gets the opposition in order to prevent this outflanking okay so for example in this diagram here Okay, so I'm going to try to figure this out myself. Oh, it's black to move. Huh. Um, so here from this side, you want to prevent the king from getting opposition. And so essentially, you don't want the king uh, to be, you know, coming around here and pushing this pawn down um, in general, uh, of course, right? And so essentially, the best move here is not king a7 because that allows this, which... Um, it's going to probably allow. Wait, wait, wait. No, no, wait, excuse me. Here, sorry. After king seven, not king king c six. Wow, that's terrible. Uh, after king seven, we can play now a five, attacking the pawn. Now, if take, if we take, we get opposition. Uh, the kings are standing, and now uh, we lose actually. And so, actually, in order to prevent this, we want to play king um, c six. No, oh, king c sorry, king c7. Sorry, king c7. And then the idea is that if he pushes and we take, take, push. Now we shove the king, and now we got the opposition. Okay, everybody understand? Okay. Um. And so. Um. Let's see. If he takes, takes. Yeah. So this is a draw. And if he goes here, I believe. We can go up here, I think, and here, then just back here. And so you just see saw between these two squares. Um, and so if he pushes his pawn, then um, you know, like this question mark. Um, or if he pushes here, take, take, and we simply win this pawn. So this is, should be a draw, I think. Um, with best play, but let's, let's look at the lecture part of this. All right, white has opposition, but it's not enough to win. King c7, king a7. Okay, yeah, so like I said, king a7 is a mistake in the view of a5, um, b a5, king takes a5, where opposition decides the game. King b7, king b7, king c5, c5, right? And it's a uh, plus minus, so it's going to be a win for white. Um, so after this, king c7, king a6. All right. Since the move c5 will be useless, okay, so like c5, so here c5 takes, takes, and now we essentially just go to the corner and just see solve here. And we Okay, so essentially that's why um, we don't play that variation, <laughs> okay? Um, and so that's why c5 is not played. 
So after king c7, king a6, uh, king a6, um, king c6, king a7, now king c7, king a8, and now we just play king c8. So essentially we're just getting opposition this way, and um, anywhere he, if he pushes pawn, so like for example if he pushes here then we, we actually get a queen faster. Uh, um, and if he tries to do something like here, oops, uh, but even like maybe here, we can win the pawn. So it's so a draw. So, um, if we move, alright so here the question is, if we move the position one file to the right, okay. There. Uh, white would win. King g7 is met with, oops, d5. Um, White would also have uh, reserve tempo, so essentially we're getting opposition here, um, right? Because take, 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 you know, the kings are facing each other and it's black to move. Um, and so... White would also win if he had reserve tempo on side. So let's move the bond back to a3. Oh gosh. Uh, man, this is like an intense endgame lecture here, guys. He's like saying, move these positions back. All right. Here, and here, here, and here. Okay. Okay, hey, X Typhus. X Typhus is now following, so thanks for following. Um, okay. So let's see here. Yay! Yeah, I know. I I, I called you out, Ty uh, Tigers. But this is Typhus, right? Um, so yeah, I know. Thanks for following. Yes, yes. Yay! Oh yeah, no, I'm not ending the stream. I'm just, yay! No problem. Um, yeah, I'm doing more instructive streams rather than entertainment streams. So, um, if you guys want, yay! Okay. Um, nice break. Hey, Trailer Trash TV. Cool. Um, Alright, so let's do some more end games. Um, let's, okay, so if we move the pawn, okay, so the point is here that now if king here, oh gosh, all right. So if we move the pawn, so if king c7, king a6, um, king c6. Now we have a4, which if if he performs f1 king, so if king c7, right, king a7, king c6, king b8, outflanking king c5, and now king b7. And so essentially here um, now. If take, take, now we can promote this pawn because this king's got these squares here. Okay, so let's do that one more time. So, point is now, after king c7, this doesn't work because white has this extra tempo. So, king a6, okay, um, king c6, all right, notice that we got these covered. King c6, and now we got a4, which now we have opposition this way, so it's black to move, and now after king c7 now obviously if he goes here then here same position results and now we just outflank that pawn um but if here 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 take and now again he has to protect his pawn and now we get to the same position attacking the pawn he takes our pawn but we also get this extra pawn back so that's the difference between this and just no, this is just a, just a one pawn move you know sometimes people rush to these pawn end games, you should not rush. Like people go, hey, a4. Well, great job. You just drew the game. You know. So the difference is this is one tempo here. You know, now you're just stuck. Uh, draw like we discussed. Um, versus like if you just play maybe this this is one move, and now you can start doing your tactics in that position. So, 
Okay, so that's why you really with these pawn games you really want to just um to slow down. Okay, so anyways um. All right, in the next position, why can't I move to? All right, so here we go. Okay, let's go here, 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 right, and a king here. All right. So, okay, in the next diagram, white can uh, white king, white's king cannot move forward because of this. Wait, wait, whoa, 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 king e1. Because we're trying to get to the square, all right, and then take this pawn. So again, like this, right? Now we can promote this pawn. Same idea, but we're kind of we're switching the colors now. Um, because after this, King G3, again, like King 1, taking opposition. Uh, King G2, King E2, King G3, and now King F1, again, same idea, where we just push and now we can take. So take, 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 and push again. So same thing. Um, so white would like to take opposition too, but king f1 is a mistake because his king, um, because after f, king f1, king d2, king uh, d3, uh, the f3 square that the uh, king needs is being occupied by his own pawn, and the opposition is passed to his opponents. So after king d3, okay, so king f2, king d3, right? Now if king f1, um, King e3, King g2, and now King e2, and same thing, same idea of 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 flanking. All right. So the question is here. Yeah. <laughs> this is good. This is good since there usually there's no time on the clock. Well, I mean, if you play one minute chess, yeah, there's usually no time on the clock. But uh, if you know what you're doing and uh, you're playing an actual chess game, like an actual like two hour time control, then you definitely can um, figure this out. Like you can take your time. And if you've seen this before, it's a lot easier for you to you know figure it out. So Okay. Okay, sorry. Um Alright, so sorry, sorry. Okay. So here I am. Um I don't know, wait, did chess kid Oh gosh. Did he want an interview? Or did he want to get on the playing? Let's see here. Okay. All right. So here, white to move. What is the best move? I guess white loses in all variations, unless there's some like trick here that we're missing. Um. Because again, like king f1. Is it king f2? Is the move that we need to play? I'll be. That'll be really tricky. Or do we have to uh, meet opposition with king h1, maybe? Oh, that'd be, oh, like king h1, king f2, king here. The same thing, right? 
right? Same thing. So you can't play that variation. Uh, I think white loses here no matter what. Just the pawn. I mean, being down pawn sucks, but I really don't see a way to, for um, white to draw. Um, these again, that, that, that maneuver is nice. Like here, 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 here. Oops. Um, yeah, here, 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 here. Oh wait, is that draw? Yeah, that, wait, that, that is a draw. Yeah, so actually king h1 is actually right. <laughs> because after this, if king f2, then king g2, then we just follow the opposition. So we actually want to get distant opposition um, here, in this case. Um, and essentially, there's three squares between these uh, king. So king h1 is probably the best move here. So I said actually that's the just draw right there. So I put that 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 draw, and and like if he pushes, then it's like whoops. <laughs> and so yeah, so actually King H1. Notice that there's three squares um, uh, between the kings, and that's still opposition. And so like here, this is direct opposition. That's still or you know short distance, whatever they might call it. Uh, the point is that there's only one square away, and this is still opposition. So it's any time when, you know, these kings are facing, and it's uh, other players who move. So king h1 is the best move here. So no, king h2 works also? Um, no, because then black is opposition, king d2, right? And now you're you're stuck, right? You're stuck with opposition? No, I don't think king d2. h2 will work, really? Um... Alright, so after king d2, I, I don't know the answer. I'm right now working the problem, so... I have king d2. No, I, I play, no, you can't play king h2 because I got king d2. And now what do you do? Now you're just lost, right? If you play king h1, I'm just going to go and attack your pawn right now. And we go back to the same variation. I'm on your pawn. Right? So king h1 works. But king h2 is meant with king d2, right? And if you go here, then I just go here, king e2, attacking your pawn. Here, take. Yeah, so yeah, king h2 does not work because you don't get opposition. There's no opposition here. Just, just the kings are not facing each other. But king h1, the one that goes to the corner, is a draw because uh, this is basically opposition. So everybody understand that? Everybody understand that? Okay. Um, all right. Anybody new here? Other than uh, oh wait, trailer trash. I've seen it before, maybe. Have I? Not. Maybe not. Oh, I guess not. Hmm. Okay. Well, welcome. Um, you've been here before. Okay. Cool. Jalik! Hey, Jalik! Jalik123! Yep. Alright. Uh, click follow if you haven't already. No. So, I know who you are and you're we'll be friends. So, no. Uh, just want to give shouts so occasionally. So, uh, Christian, uh, I want to say Christian New York now, or is that Nemen? Nemen? Christian Nemen? Is that, is that it? I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, and yummy gummy, yummy gummy. So welcome. We're just doing some haunting games. So it's it looks very dry, but we'll probably go into uh, playing some games in a sec. Um, I want to finish this chapter and um, so, and then just go into uh, playing Blitz and then Call It a Night. So been shooting for about oh six hours. No, five hours. Approaching five hours right now. So, but uh, yeah. I came from Chess Cube. Hey, cool. Yeah, that's cool. Um, wait, are you sure King Shoe doesn't work? I'm eighty percent sure that King Shoe doesn't work. Um. Unless you can, okay, I'll be right back. I need more water. Um, unless you can prove to me that uh, King H2 does work, 
because I just proved to you it doesn't work like twice. So unless you show me a line that does work, because can't show it doesn't make sense to me because you're not getting opposition. I mean, I mean you're hoping that your opponent plays like King E2 and I get the opposition this way, but why not hope or why hope rather than just get the opposition yourself by playing King H1? So um, be right back in like a minute. I'm going to go and run downstairs get the some more water, and uh, you double check if King's 2 works or not. So. Okay, so now I'm opening up the book, and now we're going to get the solution um, to this puzzle. So yeah, the only thing that saves white is getting the distant opp opposition. King h1, king d2, and now after king d2, king d3, and then, you know, the point is you want to keep maintaining the opposition. You don't want to, you know, play this and lose opposition. So, I thought there was no difference. No, 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 there is a difference, because king h2 your um, gain opposition, right? And king h2, you're not gain opposition. This is just off. Like the kings are not even on the same file. So um, yeah, that's why I said king h2. <laughs> I said king h1 is the answer, and you guys are like, no, king h2. I'm like, what? So yeah, king d2. And the point is that king h3, king e3. Oop. Oh yeah, if, even if it can't have two, you just put king g2. And the point is you hold on to this pawn that's guarding this two pawns from advancing. So now.